Okay, here it is once again. So I got the charger mm -hmm. on because I've been cranking a little bit. And just to let you know, I do know that it does. I did put a new starter in it about four or five months ago. Um, I believe all the fittings are torqued down, and so so it should have a good seal. I did notice this line here. This is the fuel pressure fuel pressure regulator line, and it's actually soft rubber. Um, apparently, it it checks the vacuum on the intake manifold and adjust the fuel pressure accordingly. So we'll do that here. And uh, so yeah, I hooked up, uh, pretty much sure I hooked every single thing back up the way it was, the way I took it off. I put this new injector in here, whatever number two I think it is. Um, Cause the other one was dead, there was no continuity on it. Um, pretty much, Everything is nice and tight. I actually loosened the fuel uh, fuel filter uh, clamp just to see if I had any pr uh, fuel spurting out when I cranked it over. I may put a pressure gauge on that to see if I've got uh, the correct pressure. All these little hoses in here are all clamped tight. Um, I checked it and I did have spark. It's got a brand new cap and rotor. Um, so after I put the cap and rotor on, um, it still ran the same. And then I uh, put my meter on that one, found it was dead, replaced it. It was kind of tricky to pull out of there. Um, I tried the dual uh, wrench uh, technique to try and pry that out of there. It didn't pry out. The old one broke off where the wrench uh, pries into. Basically, I used a heat gun, heated it up, and pulled it out. I did mo modify this clamp here so that I don't have to take, uh, you know, the, whatever the valve cover gasket off, pull this mount off, so now I can just loosen these if I need to take that manifold off again. Um, so let's crank and see what it does. It's probably not gonna do anything. Apparently, if, you, if it gets flooded and you put your foot all the way on the accelerator pedal on this particular one, um, it shuts off the fuel injectors. Um, Normally, when I started it before, it would start right up. I didn't have to give it any gas. And uh, actually, this thing sat for probably about three years and wasn't run. And when I put a new starter in, it started right up. So, and once again, uh, it was running fine. It started That's right basically how actually it this blue has. level. Anyway, one day, out of the blue, parked it, started it, running rough, okay? Found out this injector was bad. Pull this cap off here. I could hear the spark running. I pulled that. Uh, I basically pulled all these to see which one made a difference. When I pulled this one, nothing, nothing changed. It was still rough, rough idle or missing. And so I pulled the plug. I could hear the noise in the cylinder. So what I did is uh, I put a meter on that, and then it was open. And so otherwise, it was running great. So, yeah, in order to take this fat one out, I had to pull the manifold off. So there's one, two, three, four, five, five bolts, and then there's two underneath that hold that manifold on. And I actually took this off too, because there's extra hoses I didn't want to have to take off. Okay, so anyway, let's give it a crank. I really don't think it's gonna start. I haven't really done anything to it um, since yesterday, and it, st and it wouldn't start yesterday as well. I, I'm thinking that it has something to do with the fuel pressure. I actually ordered another fuel pump uh, that's on its way just for the heck of it. This one is in the tank, and then you access the fuel pump uh, under the back seat. And hopefully I won't have to do that because it was running fine before that. I did hear some funny noises when it got low on gas, um, but uh, it did run fine and never had any problem with it. Okay, so let's give it a try and see what happens now this has got somebody said oh gotta go in there and check that electronic control module it's in, down here um it's been loose i checked the codes on it it's got a little screw in there screw back and forth and then it'll beep uh, a flashing light and uh it's supposed to also flash the light up here but uh you know it, you're supposed to do it with a key on and uh it's normally I just turned it on. You can hear the fuel pump coming on. 
You know, she'll pump shit off. See, it doesn't even pop. And what I did is I checked the spark, and I did have spark. I actually sprayed the starter fluid. I sprayed the starter fluid directly. I, first, I sprayed it under here. I couldn't get any, any sound, nothing. Then uh, I pulled this off, and I sprayed that in there, and it still didn't fire, so it was like, it's really confusing because... Um, when I first checked it, it had spark. And so, yeah, it's a little tricky at this point. It's, it's like beyond logic, and uh, I don't really, this is the first time I've ever worked on one of these. I've ever had one of these. I, a friend of mine had one, I, I, I like the car, and so uh, I found one that somebody basically abandoned. I went through all the paper, paperwork at the DMV. I was like, they actually wanted 800 bucks at the DMV. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a big runaround, but I, I, uh, I told them that, uh, you know, I basically, you know, said that I shouldn't, shouldn't have to pay for it because it wasn't my fault when uh, the back fees were due, you know. It wasn't in my care when the back fees were due, so they, they kind of let me slide. So I ended up paying about 400 bucks. I still had to get it smogged according to the, whatever, the state regulations um, for the Department of Motor Vehicles if I'm going to do that. Um, I definitely don't want to have the car towed, so, but I, I did pay, pay the fees on it. Um, and uh, around here, you definitely don't want to leave the cars parked on the street because um, cops just love to write these little $80, $80 parking tickets. <clears throat> anyway, I, I, I was running rough, swap that injector. I had to take this off, put it all back together. It's all back together now, it just won't start. I checked this plug here, we've got spark here. So that means the coil's good. And you know, what I'm gonna have to do is that's the primary step you do, right? Make sure you got battery power, make sure you got spark and fuel. Usually spark is easy to check and fuel, uh, but you gotta check both of them, make sure you got a proper mixture. Just like 14 to 1. And here comes my wild neighbor. I actually just cleaned it. These uh, plugs were new when I got this thing. And uh, so I don't think there's a problem with this plug. I'm gonna check the spark. I smell a little bit of gas down in there. Um, the plug was not actually gas valved. Okay, so I'm gonna actually let you watch the spark. Okay, so all those other cylinders had spark, they, they all had spark. Um, down here it did smell a little gassy, it did smell a little gassy at the plug. Um, but uh, when I first had the problem, I checked that second one and it was fine. I'm checking all of them. Hopefully if I clean the gas out, I'll just, if, it's, if it's flooded, clean the gas out. Hopefully it will start. If not, next thing I gotta do is check that fuel. Uh, make sure it's coming out. Actually, this clamp is not even clamped. It's loose and it's not spurting out of there. I would imagine it's got some pressure. Uh, other thing I was gonna do is maybe put a vacuum on that line and see what happens, or take it off. I tried starter fluid directly in here first, and nothing, in the intake, and then I pulled that off, sprayed it right in there, and nothing. So I'm thinking it was probably flooded, that's the only logical explanation. Okay, I'm checking the number two one again, just to clear it out. Give it a try, just 
push the accelerator all the way down to shut the uh, fuel injectors off. Accelerator all the way down. There it is. That's the closest I've found to getting it going so far. Let me try it again. So it's not a good idea to run your starter longer than like 15 seconds. It's like really hard on it. Starters weren't made to run very long. They're made to crank a few times and then rest basically. wants to start but it just won't. So I'm gonna check the fuel line again. Apparently I think it's getting plenty of fuel. Okay so the thing's nice and tight. Plenty of spark. These little hoses, this little hose on this little uh, resonator chamber thing came loose. Put that back on. Actually, this thing was loose too, so I put that back on. I actually pulled that off when I messed with that fuel filter in the beginning. Forgot to put it back on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray starter fluid inside this box here. I've got the fuel pump disconnected. So this is the fuel pump. I'm going to disconnect the fuel pump. It's a 15 amp fuse. Third one down, what is it? Third one down from the, third one down from the top. Actually had that little puller thing that came in handy. And so I'm gonna give that a try. See what happens.